counsel John Durham testified on Capitol Hill Wednesday about his report about the FBI. Durham was appointed back in 2019 by then Attorney General Bill Barr to review the origins of the FBI's investigation into potential ties between Russia and Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. He released his findings last month, four years after his review began. His report criticized the FBI and claimed the agency's bias for opening the investigation into the Trump campaign was, quote, seriously flawed and said some agents involved had confirmation bias. He found no evidence of political influence. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins me now. Scott, what were House Republicans looking for from Durham's testimony? Well, they gave this thing six hours, John. He gave Don Durham a day's worth of uh, cable TV airtime and the platform of the House Judiciary Committee. So presumably they wanted to amplify what John Durham had to say. And this was the first time we heard John Durham speak publicly about this four-year investigation into the launch of an investigation by the feds into ties between Russia and the 2016 election. So what became of those six hours? It's really the political version of a Monet painting. It is impressionistic art. Look at it and view it as you might through your own political lens. Republicans argued today and amplified the voice of John Durham in doing so that the FBI went too far and too fast into an investigation that had all kinds of political implications into Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. They didn't have enough evidence or didn't have solid enough evidence to do so. That's what John Durham argued in his report. He did so today, and Republicans echoed that. Democrats counterpunched today at great lengths, John, to say that John Durham didn't find much of any crime didn't bring a bunch of defendants to trial and win convictions for criminal misconduct, and the Democrats argue, whatever mistakes were made by the FBI through the launch of that investigation, they say have since been corrected, and oh, by the way, they add, there was collusion between the Russians and efforts to try to alter the 2016 elections, if not with Donald Trump, with people who wanted to see Donald Trump win. Speaking of all of this uh, past history, there has been a new move by the House that it voted to censure Adam Schiff. Can you tell us what, what that was about and what, the, what happened? Yeah, this evening began with Adam Schiff, the California congressman who led the first impeachment of Donald Trump, with allegations that there was efforts to work with the Russians or interfere with investigations. Adam Schiff was censured tonight by a party line vote in the U.S. House with some members of the House Ethics Committee abstaining or voting present, but this was a pure party line vote. We saw this coming down the pike weeks ago. They've been trying to push this measure to the floor, and tonight they did. Democrats surrounded Schiff on the floor when he was called to the dais to be formally censured. They cheered him. They applauded him, and then they shouted, shame on you and shame to the Republicans. Take a look at that. You can see how the image change tonight from Adam Schiff standing before the House Speaker to all the Democrats, all his colleagues standing with him, jeering Republicans and cheering Mr. Schiff. In another matter, uh, sort of in the same basket of federal investigation, a judge will unseal court records Thursday that identify who helped pay for Congressman George Santos's bail. Uh, what do you think that's going to do and what's the sense on the Hill about what that information might lead to? That's set for 12 p.m. New York time on Thursday. The federal judge who is handling George Santos's federal criminal case, his fraud case, is finally going to release the papers that show the three individuals or fewer who helped him make his half million dollars bond in that criminal case. He's been trying to keep that information sealed, saying that their health and safety could be at risk if their identities are known. He's even said provocatively in his court filings he'd be willing to go to pretrial detention to jail to keep those names private. Well, there's a put up or shut up moment tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time when the judge releases those names. It's a moment that not just court watchers or those interested in his case are looking at, but the House Ethics Committee mm -hmm. wants those names too, John, to ensure George Santos didn't violate the House gift rule in accepting help to make bond. Mm -hmm. Scott McFarland in Washington. Thank you so much, Scott.